Part C of our lesson of charged particles and their motion through electric fields is basically Millikan's contribution to um, science. And that was Robert Millikan and his famous oil drop experiment. Okay, now Millikan would have done other things in science, but this, this is pretty famous because he did this experiment and it basically changed the way we thought about a lot of stuff. So early researchers like Benjamin Franklin, Coulomb, they knew that objects obtained their charge by transferring some type of particle to something else. Franklin thought, Benjamin Franklin, he thought that electricity was the flow of positive charge. Um, the Coulomb, of course, was the first unit of charge, and it represented some reproducible amount. But no one knew, and this is what is so bizarre about electricity, no one knew at the time that really how many electrons made up a Coulomb. And in fact, Benjamin Franklin had it wrong when he thought that electricity was the flow of positive charge, because it isn't the flow of positive charge, it's the flow of negative charge. But no one really knew that. And so what ended up happening was, is that Robert Millikan performed an, his oil drop experiment, and this is what he did. So two parts. First part was that he determined the charge on a little tiny droplet of oil. Okay, he determined how much charge was on it. And then he tried to determine the smallest charge that was possible on an oil droplet. And so physically, this is then what he did. This is, this is the apparatus that he used. Okay, and now this is, this is not too, too confusing, but basically it was a parallel plate. So he had a positive plate down here and he had a negative plate up here. And he set up um, the potential difference in such a way that a little positive droplet of oil would float in between the parallel plates because the electric field, of course, which way does this little plus want to go? It wants to go up towards the negative plate. But droplets of oil have mass, and so the mass then and the force of gravity was a force that was in the opposite direction. So here was the free body diagram of our little test charge. I had the electric force going up, and he had the gravitational force going down, and so this little droplet of oil floated here. And of course, if he really souped up the electric field, so he put more potential difference, of course then the electric force would overpower the gravitational force, and it would go upwards, right? If, we, if, he, if he lowered it, then of course the gravitational force would, ta would take over and it would go downwards. And so by balancing these forces, he was able to determine the charge on one oil droplet, right? Because he was able to do this. So here's what he did mathematically. He said the force of electricity was equal to the force of gravity. And so he knew what the electric field was because he could measure the potential difference. And he knew what the mass of the oil was, and he knew what G was, and so he said, oh, well, then the charge on one little droplet is just this. It's mg divided by the electric field. So for a parallel plate, I know exactly what E is, right? Like for a parallel plate, I can use this little formula. I said, oh, the potential difference in between these, and if I know the distance that these two plates are apart, I can tell you exactly what the electric field is. And so basically he was able to say that the charge is equal to mass times the acceleration due to gravity times the distance between the plates divided by the potential difference was equal to the charge on one droplet. What he did was, and this is what's brilliant, is that he performed a statistical analysis on a series of measurements. And he looked for the smallest charge that he found. And then he theorized that all other charges he found were integral multiples of this small one, right? And that makes sense, right? If the charge on anything is just a whole bunch of electrons, then let's say I had a droplet with five electrons. The charge on that droplet, which he would have been able to calculate, would have been five times the charge on one electron. Let's say there was another oil droplet and it was 10 electrons. Well then the charge on that electron would have been 
10 times the charge on one electron. So he looked at all these things and he said, wait a second, there's a common value here. There's a common integer, a common multiple. And all of those common multiples, basically the one common multiple is this, which is 1.602 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And lo and behold, he realized that is the charge on one electron. Now, interestingly enough, we're going to actually perform a, a lab that's very similar to what he did. We're going to take his process and we're going to see if we can't figure out um, something similar. And as you'll see, it's painstaking, but it does work. And that's the end of this lesson number eight on the motion of charged particles through electric fields.